what structures in specific are we looking at when you talk of um, improving mass literacy in the country? What structures are you coming up with? As I told you, we intend to set up centers in 10 centers in each uh, ward in the country. And then with the promise by the president during the budget speech that 500,000 teachers are going to be recruited, trained, and deployed. We hope a portion of them will be given for this uh, project. When you talk of creating more universities, now when the existing ones are still far below standards, is this the right way to go? It is, because most of the institutions you are talking about are not structured to address adult illiteracy. And we have so many problems actually in all areas and we will not just say because we have too many problems, some of them will not be attacked. So actually we are going to confront all our problems all together, even though some matter of emphasis will be, as I told you earlier, we intend to put priority on the out of school children and the adult illiterates. What are you doing to improve the quality of the existing ones? existing secondary schools and primary schools. The question of teachers, for instance, the president has already promised to recruit 500,000, at least for the basic level. And we have the intention to convert some of our universities into centers of excellence for postgraduate studies, so that at least they will be producing teachers who will man places in the tertiary institutions. Certainly, we have so many problems, and there is a question of infrastructure. And the biggest, perhaps, is the problem of funding, which we are doing our best also to, to solve, because each area is crying for more funds. And in the last budget, they say education got the lion's share, 369 billion. And we are very grateful to the president for this, but we are an elephant getting alliance share. So actually it is not sufficient. It may probably not go around. Let's come to the tertiary education sector now. We have a situation where uh, none of Nigerian universities is in the top 600 world best universities. What do you make of such situation? It is unfortunate, but I would like to congratulate the University of Ibadan. At least it is among the 800 best ones now. But what we want, we would like to see UI and the first generation universities coming back to the 100 best in the world. Um, we have so many problems in the tertiary institutions. Um, still we come back to the question of funding. And there is a question of also of access. Our children who graduate from the secondary schools only 17% of them get admission into the universities. That is a very big problem which you have to solve. And from your last question, you wouldn't probably want to hear that we are going to establish more universities, but that is something that we have to do. Expand the ones that are existing, establish new ones, and in particular, let's say we could tell the National Open University to open up so that so many people could be educated at the same time the others are trying to expand and there is also the question of disruption to our calendar which has for a very long time seen to the failure of many universities to graduate students but this administration has come with a very very effective way of dealing with this situation we no longer wait for unions to start strike anytime there is a problem we get to them before they even start complaining and I believe this administration will finish without a single incidence of strike because we really care and we also respect the struggle by the unions because most of them are really patriotic and they, they have a point and we listen to them. When you talk about creating more universities, is this about churning out half-baked graduates? No, the question of standard is very, very important and we are doing whatever we can about it. Um, standards in Nigerian universities, unfortunately, what we inherited is nothing to write home about. And 
the government is doing its best and the question of funding is, is being addressed through TED Fund, through many other areas given scholarships and so on. The, the, the TED Fund you talked about now have been accused of being lopsided in the disbursement of grants. What are you doing about this? It is not all universities that are eligible. All federal higher tertiary institutions are eligible. But state universities, for instance, a state must decide which one is going to benefit when we come to a particular round. So if a, a state chooses one and it is given, others probably have to wait their turn. It is, there is no lopsidedness at all. There is a formula which we follow. What's the formula you observe before disbursing of grants from TED Fund? In a state, we ask a state to choose one university. And then when they choose that in the university, that will be given the allocation. In determining which universities to release grants to at the state level, now do you just discuss with the governor of the state who decides at the state level? That is how is their own problem how they decide, but we speak to the governor on whether it is the governor himself who will decide or he will ask the uh, education authority, minister of education in his state, they decide and choose a university and then TED Fund will intervene in that university. But at the federal level, what's, what obtains? No, all federal tertiary institutions are eligible. Are you considering exploring the fallow pension funds to fund education? Any type of fund that will be made available to education is welcome. And I know there is a lot of money in our pension funds. If this will be made available to education, we'll be very, very happy. And we are even eyeing the one trillion or so that has been collected from those who looted the public treasury. We'll be very, very happy to receive that. Let's look at one slogan that you've mounted an intense advocacy for, and that's education for change. What's the thrust behind the slogan? The thrust is just uh, like all other things in the country. We just have to turn a new leaf. It will never be business as usual. And the change that is sweeping the world will not allow Nigeria alone. The world has turned into a knowledge economy. The, the, the oil that this Nigeria depends on is a Western asset. And even if it is going to remain, what is happening all over the world that the best commodity now is knowledge. We just have to start producing knowledge. Otherwise, the world will just go and leave Nigeria behind. And what we have just learned, the action plan, is just to put the foundation down for Nigeria to start building on. You can also join in this conversation by sending us your comments on our various social media platforms showing on your screen. Coming up on Question Time, the Education Minister's comment about the cancellation of the post-UTME examination. Join us again.